Hi, my name is Morgan Holmes, and I'll be introducing you today to Frederick Chopin's Waltz Opus 64, Number 1. Chopin did not like it when his pieces had casual nicknames. He preferred simple names, such as the Waltz and D flat major. However, his Waltz Opus 64, Number 1, had two nicknames. First, it is known as the Minute Waltz. Uh, many people that hear this nickname assume that the piece is supposed to be played in under 60 seconds. However, this is a common misconception. An unknown publisher actually nicknamed this piano piece the Minute Waltz after the French word for tiny uh, because of how short the waltz was, not because it was written to be played at lightning speed. A typical performance lasts, actually lasts one and a half to two minutes. This piece also has the subtitle Waltz of the Little Dog. Chopin's lover, George Sand, had a dog named Marquise. One day, Sand was so amused by her dog chasing its tail that she requested that Chopin write a piece portraying that scene. Whether it is referred to as the Minute Waltz, Waltz of the Little Dog, or Waltz in D-flat major, this is one of the most well-known waltzes. When Chopin wrote this waltz in 1847, his life was in turmoil uh, because of both his relationships and his health. Uh, first off was his relationships. Uh, Chopin had been with George Sand since 1838, but their relationship took a rocky turn in 1845. After many huge arguments about George Sand's daughter and a not-so-nice autobiography written by Sand, Sand and Chopin's relationship ended. Even though their relationship had struggled for the past few years, Chopin never really recovered from their breakup. He wrote the Minot Waltz in the same year that they broke up as well. His relationship with, not, uh, with George Sand was not the only thing he was struggling with in the year that he wrote his waltz. His health was also rapidly declining. A few years earlier, in 1838, Chopin had stayed in an old monastery with harsh winters, and there he was diagnosed with consumption. After a few months, he was feeling healthier, but a few years later, his health began declining again in 1847. When he returned to London, he weighed less than 100 pounds, and the doctors warned Chopin that he was in the terminal stages of his illness. He died on October 17, 1849. The Walton T. Flat Major was one of Chopin's last pieces he wrote. It was even included in his final uh, concert in Paris. So the Minot Waltz is the first of three in a collection called Trois Waltzes, Opus 64. The standard structure for waltzes in this time period was an introduction, a few different melodies and motifs, and then a melody or a coda that recapped the melodies. Chopin's waltz fits that structure exactly. It is in a simple ternary form or ABA prime format. Um, it begins with a four measure introduction right here. Um, and then the A section is a 36 measure theme with the last 16 measures repeated. Um, so it has the first theme right here, which is 16 measures. And then it goes to the second theme, which is still in the A section. Um, and this is also 16 measures, but then it's repeated again. After the both sec parts of the A section, um, the B section, there's the B section. Um, the B section has a 16 measure phrase that is repeated once with an ornamented melody. So we have the first 16 measures right here, and then it's repeated again uh, with various trills um, and grace notes. And then after our B section, we go back to the A section um, after a long trill. So we go back to the A section, which is repeated almost exactly. Um, the biggest difference is that the second part of the A section, instead of just being repeated twice, is actually repeated three times. Um, and after it's finished with the third time, then we have our four measure coda at the very end. Also similar to most waltzes, this piece is in a 3-4 meter, um, and this waltz is, mo is meant to be played molto vivise, or very lively and fast, um, which fits in with the high-spirited energy of the piece. Because of the tempo, meter, and structure, this waltz fits the prescribed dance forms and their social function of most of the waltzes at this time which is unique for Chopin because most of his music before his waltzes, such as his ballads, etudes, and nocturnes, used a much freer form. So as shown here, as shown here, the first four measures of the piece are the introduction. The beginning sounds like a long trill, and it uses a short five-note motif in the key of D-flat. This motif is the first of four themes in the piece. It spans a perfect fourth and goes from A-flat, um, to G, to A flat, to C, and then finally to B flat. Um, the frequently played fifth scale degree, A flat, um, gives the introduction a strong dominant feeling. This dominant feeling builds up the anticipation for when the piece finally goes to a one chord in the fifth measure. 
Chopin builds on this motif later in the piece by adding trills, slight note variations, and scalar runs in between the motifs. This section is marked legerio, or light and graceful. Um, Chopin begins this piece with a simple motif and little harmonic movement in order to set the tone for the rest of the piece. So now we'll listen to this section. Okay. Okay, um, so we're going to listen to it one more time and I'll stop it. Um, stop it just after the short four measure instruction. Perfect, so it's pretty short. Um, and then, uh, so after this short introduction, we go into the first section or first part of the A section. Um, this section goes from measures 5 to 20. The, uh, the theme begins with the same turn figure that the introduction had, um, although it now incorporates a waltz bass as well. The second theme also has a descending scalar and rhythmic motive. So if you look up here, we can see that this rhythm repeats over twice um, and is part of a descending scale. And in this section, Chopin keeps the chords pretty simple by using mostly 1 and 5 chords. Um, so 1, 1, 1, 5, 5, 5, 5, and then back to 1. And they're all in either root or first inversion. He uses mostly complete chords, especially in the waltz bass. This section is notable because it is the main theme of the piece. So now we'll listen to this next section. Okay, so there's that first section. Um, and then after the first section of, first part of section A, um, there's the second part of section A. And uh, this third theme in the piece um, goes from measures 21 to 36. Once again, it begins with a turn similar to the introduction. Um, then it uses a motif um, that starts with a triplet. Uh, which kind of accentuates the downbeat, um, and it also has um, a descending motive that ranges two octaves. And this third theme also continues to use a waltz bass as well. So we'll go ahead and listen to this part. Okay, um, so that, that's part of section, the, the end of the A section, um, and then after the A section is the B section. Uh, the fourth and final motif occurs in the B section of this waltz. This theme goes from measures 53 to 84 and is made up of a 16 measure theme that is repeated twice. Um, this section continues to use the waltz bass as well, um, but really the most important thing to note in this section is the contrast between the A and B sections. Chopin used expression markings, rhythmic expansions, um, and inter variety, interval variety to create this contrast. Um, it has greater variety in the intervals because of the section's frequent skipping motions. Um, unlike the previous section, which moved mostly by stepwise motion, this portion mostly moved by skips. Um, so if you look right here, it skips, 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 um, and then the first step doesn't even um, in the melody doesn't occur until measure 44. Um, it is also rhythmically expanded. Most of the notes are quarter notes and half notes instead of the eighth notes that create the majority of the beginning sections. The other element that creates contrast in this B section is the markings that Chopin puts in the piece. First, he says this section is to be played sustinato, or sustained. This directs the player to create long, sustained legato sounds. It's shown right here. Chopin also puts direction the directions in this section to play pio lento, or slower. While the, section, um, the other section was lively, this section is more relaxed and smooth. The contrast is vital to this piece because it adds variety and interest. It also creates give and take in the piece. So now we'll listen to this a little bit of the sex, second section.
Um, so after this B section, it goes back, as shown back in variations timeline, um, it goes back and does the first part of the A section again, um, and then the second part of the A section, and then after this, it ends with a four measure coda that is comprised of a B flat major descending scale. Um, it ends with the same motif that is played at the beginning, which gives the piece a finished feeling. So we'll just kind of listen to the end here. Okay. So here's the coda, coda, and you can kind of see um, how it how it ends does end with that same theme, which really does give it a, a finished feeling. So the minute waltz is a brilliant piece. Not only does it follow the prescribed waltz form of the time period, but it also adds interest by using contrasting sections, ornamentation, and clear dynamics. Chopin had the ability to make a short two-minute piece go from lively to legato while still making the piece flow together.